guitar before? Black leather, black leather, rock, rock, rock. Black leather, black leather, ta, ta, ta. Black leather, black leather. Oh, look at this, Dave. Hello, darling. Hey, 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 hey. Black leather, black leather, rock, rock, rock. Black leather, black leather, ta, ta, ta. Black leather, black leather, hip, hip, hip. I got that feeling, black leather rock. Crash, crash, crash. Black leather, black leather, kill, kill, kill. I got that feeling, black leather rock. Black leather, black leather, smash, smash, smash. Black leather, black leather, crash, crash, crash. Black leather, black leather, kill, kill, kill. I got that feeling, black leather rock. Forward into battle, dear chaps. All right, let's have it now. Come on in. Get ready now. Let's have it. Look, we're going to have some marching on. You happy in your work, Joni? By the left, quick march. London. <laughs> I should have given you some more warning. No, I'm always glad to see you. Could I have some tea, please? Then what's the matter? Have you let my bird house to a new girlfriend? No. No new girlfriend. The place is yours for this summer. I brought rent for two summers. <sighs> they call it my graveyard bird. <laughs> How do you like it, huh? This? I like this very much indeed. Would you like me to go back to London? I want you to stay, Freya. I love it here. I do my best work here, too. Mr. Wells, your passport. I think I'd better sit down for a minute. Come into the terrace here. Oh. Good evening, sir. Are you all right? Yes, thanks. Shall I get a doctor for you? No. Thank you very much. Not at all. 
How do you do? Major Holland, Miss Freya Nielsen. Welcome to Weymouth. Thank you. Would you excuse my appearance? I've been sightseeing. I gather he was beaten up by teddy boys. But why? They wanted my money, I guess. Did you lose very much? I wasn't caring a lot. But why did they beat you up? Here we are. This is what you need. Thank you. I'm sorry to put you in so much trouble. That's no trouble at all. It gives me an excuse to have one myself. How are you, sir? Captain Gregory, Miss Nielsen. How do you do? Captains and majors, hmm? Do they both belong to you? Aye. And I keep a pet colonel in the kennel at home. You will excuse us, sir. Thanks again. Come on. Now, where did all this happen? Maybe he doesn't want to explain. I'll uh, say this. I never expected a thing like this to happen to be in England. You thought England was a country of old ladies knitting socks? Well, let me put it this way. I expected you, but not the street gangs. The age of senseless violence has caught up with us, too. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure you're in no mood to listen to me moralizing about your misfortunes. Go ahead. I like to listen to people who know what they're talking about. My trouble is I never believe anything they say. Good for you. Do you think so? Yes, I do. I don't. The people who know all the answers are much happier. <laughs> then why aren't you one of them? I just told you I don't like the answers. I'd uh, better wash my face. It's much easier to be polite when you're clean. Will you excuse me? I thought you would. I like him because he doesn't like the world. It's a good beginning. It's hardly enough, is it? I agree. Your uh, military friends, do they belong to your mysterious project? Yes. And how is it going? Very well. Very well. Top secret. You know, someone once told me that when a bureaucrat wants to keep his job, he stamps everything top secret. Is that true? It's probably true, sometimes. I hate your secrets, Bernard. Freya, if I were to tell you even a little bit about what you call my secrets. I might be condemning you to death. Please trust my judgment. Now, would you like a drink before dinner? Would you like to go out in search of that Italian dish you used to be <laughs> Not bad. Let's have a go at it. No magic. Five oh, quits as you don't. All right, then. How's that, then? How about that one over there, then? Yeah, wait a minute. You Do you mind? I want to speak to my sister. What's the matter, Joni? Make you feel big playing with the Americans' money? Money's money, isn't it? I wonder what kind of man he is. Looking for pickups. Dirty. Maybe. Look at Johnny. It's you and me against the world. It's been this way since we were kids. He offered me his arm to cross the street. Yeah? Yeah. Real Boy Scout.
Never seen a boat before? You better find somebody else today. I haven't even got a penny on me. What do you want this time? You couldn't be talking to me. Why do you do it? There couldn't be any money in it. Is it for kicks? Huh? I'm going to have a private yacht any day now. I am very happy for you. Now, look, if you've got anything to say, please say it. Otherwise, move along. Or I'll call the cops. Oh, you're much prettier out of jail. As long as you're not pulling your pretty little games on me, you can do as you like. It takes two to play pretty little games. Look, I invited you for a drink. You didn't? You didn't invite me anywhere. You invited a little tart that you picked up on the street. Well, who are you, Lady Godiva? That would make you peeping Tom. Oh. Whoever I am, I'm not who you think. You never even asked my name. With a figure like that, you don't need a name. Okay. Okay, it's, it's all my fault. I thought you were a little tight. I'll do better than that. I still think so. <laughs> now, what's your name? Joe. My name is Simon. How'd you do, Simon? How'd you do, Joe? Thing. Why are you here? I'm on holiday. From what? Everything. I used to be an insurance executive, but I decided to give it up. It's a nice life. What is? To be able to give it up. If you don't like what you're doing, I mean. Your friends are never very far away. 
Oh, allow me to correct you, dear chap. Joni here is my sister. You couldn't be. Oh, yes. And I'm sure your sort isn't interested in my sister. Is that why you send her out into the streets? Simon! Get out of the boat, Joni. Stay where you are, John. If I was Simon, I'd let her go. Now, if you want to go fishing, simple Simon, you may go. Don't ever do that again, Joni. I'll do what I like, King. Do you think I'll let a man put his dirty hands on you? Dead man. Joan, sorry you came. Oh, no, I'm looking forward to spending the rest of my life out here. Might be nice. Oh, just ducky. Now that you've carried me off in such a heroic style, what are you going to do? Can't go back to Weymouth. Look, I'm not afraid of King. Well, I am. Do you know what happened the last time I tried to go out with a man? I was locked in a cupboard for a week. Locked in a cupboard and I'm 20 years of age. Don't you have any parents? No. King is all I've got. Well, you should be glad to be rid of him. Who says I am? I do. Well, you're wrong. All that's happened is I'm stuck out here in the middle of the ocean on a boat and King is waiting and watching for me to go back and for you. That isn't the only thing that's happened, and you know it. For a split second, you had the choice of staying with King or coming with me. 
Oh, don't try and make anything of that. Actually, you had your whole life to make up your mind. When you jumped, you jumped out of pure instinct. You know that. You might as well stop talking. I'm not listening to you. Don't be childish, Joan. You don't want that gang or any part of them. And I don't want you either, so shut up. Why'd you choose me yesterday? Because you look as if you had money. Is that the only reason? Yes. Why'd you come back? Damn you, damn you, damn you. You are dirty. You're just what King said you were. I'm going to get myself a beer. Do you want one? I don't drink. King's rules. Joan, I'm sorry. I was clumsy and brutal. It was my fault. Will you forgive me? For what? I want you to put me ashore, please, Simon. What will you do about King? That's my affair. Look, I've got plenty of gas. We can go anywhere on the south coast to France, if you like. I don't speak French. Look, why don't you go to France? You can spend your life running away. But I'd be running away from you. I have to live with what I've got. Please put me ashore. You'd go back to the gang? I know a place I can hide for a while until he cools off. If you really want to go, I... There's nothing I could do to stop you. But I wish you'd stay. I won't have anybody to fight with. Please put me ashore, Simon. Cluster three, will you, Timothy? Thank you, sir. like a gilded bird in a rather rusty cage. You security chaps have the imagination of prison warders. That shouldn't surprise you. Well, it irks me. What destroys me is the waste of all our talents. Bernard was telling me about his last visit to the minister the other day. What kind of education is this noble person? Kind of education? Why my kind of education? The fellow himself is practically illiterate. What irks you, Dingle, is the fact that you can't accept somebody else's authority. And if it were up to you, you turn all these children into beatniks. In the circumstances, would that matter? Unfortunately, we can't predict the circumstances. Then self-reliance is really all we can give them. Self-reliance, character, gentility. You think these values will mean anything, Gregory? Oh, I don't really think about that sort of thing, dear boy. You're the sort that built the empire, aren't you? How did you do it without thinking? Well, I'm a little out of my depth, I'm sure, but I'll have a shot at it. Any bully can command obedience. Only a gentleman can command loyalty. Ah. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Draw the curtains, will you please, Dingle? Yes, sir. It's 11.55. Switch that thing on, will you?
Good morning, children. Sit up, please. I hope we're not in our rebellious mood this morning. We don't like being seen this way. There is no other way. We want to see you the way we see each other. Sit up, please. Now, this is our morning for questions, if you have any. Sir? Yes, George. Mr. Stewart told us that brothers and sisters can't marry. Is that true? Yes, but none of you are brothers and sisters. But, sir, there are nine of us. And if any boy can marry any girl, there's going to be one left over. Your arithmetic is sound, but I don't think you have to worry about that yet. Sir, I like the boxing, but the other boys won't fight with me. He hits too hard. Well, Charles, perhaps uh, Mr. Stewart could provide a punching bag. Not in person, of course. <laughs> Sir, when we go up, the girls, I mean, will we look like Miss Lamont? You will look as you do now. Uh, you will be bigger, of course. This is a serious question, sir. And then I shall do my best, Victoria. Sir, in your little talks to us, you talk about responsibility and duty and all that. I'm very sorry if I seem pompous to you, Victoria. That's not it, sir. But you always talk about when the time comes. What we want to know is when does the time come? There are many things which you'll only understand when you're older. You'll be told everything in time, each new thing as you are able to understand it, and not before. We're getting very old now, sir. And we can understand everything. You'll have to trust me, children, and let me be the judge. It's not democratic, sir. That'll be all for this morning. It's time for your lunch. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Good morning. Good morning. Someday they will have to be told everything. I wish there was some way to avoid it. What's that place? That? It's where some big shot lives. Sometimes he has a woman staying back here. She makes these things. Do you like them? Do you like them? I don't know. Shall we go in? You mean you're planning on hiding out in here? Yes. What's wrong with that? It must be locked. Of course it's locked. Then I'll break the window. Oh, no. You must have more respect for other people's property. as if into cloud. I don't understand you. Sometimes you sound like a... I can read. And sometimes like something entirely Are different. you planning to stay? I haven't made any plans. You can't exist on beer. I'll make you some food before you go back to the boat. I'll see what's left in the larder this time. Oh. 
matter? I cut myself on the blasted tin. This is all there is. Not even a packet of biscuits. Let me see that finger. Nothing. Yeah, no, show it to me. It's all right. It's terrible. Go on, eat. Please go back to the boat, Simon. You want me to? Yes. I'm frightened. Of you, brother. Of you. You weren't frightened of me before. You hadn't kissed me before. Keep right on kissing you. Are you there? I've gone to Paris. Where do you think I am? I mean, are you there? Or are you thinking of something else? I'm not thinking at all. Good. Then you're happy. You think to stop thinking means you're happy? Sometimes. Sometimes it's the other way around. But I'm not happy. Why? It doesn't matter. But tell me. I didn't want to be just somebody's girl. Will you marry me? That's what you think now, of course. been married and divorced and are much older than you are. But I've never found this kind of quietness before. It's as if I were no longer afraid of dying. Then I am lucky. Thank you, Simon. It's King. Is anybody there? I know I'm sloppy. But I'm not that bad. Two of them. This is like a railroad station. What can I do for you, sir? Would you mind getting out of my bedroom? 
Where's Joni? Uh, <clears throat> well, I don't know. Where did they go? You might as well ask me where they came from. Well, they are. Uh, I don't have the faintest idea. If we're going to have a conference on this subject, I think you better get out of here, away from that bed. your friend. Well, he may be, but the odds are against it. Oh, very humorous, that is. I don't like people that try to make fun of me. I sympathize. I know your kind. Smart talking, bad living. People with no morals. Maybe my morals are different from yours. You don't have any. You think this junk's all that matters? I've been here before. I've seen them. They're nasty, that's one. Well, now, that depends on how you look at them. You think I ought to like them? Sure, don't you? What have my morals got to do with your journey? Very strange boy. I'm strange, all right. I'll show you just how strange I am. Is this what you make your junk with? Give me that thing. Give it to me, I said. I don't have anything to do with you. Take your Take your face, your... mean to me. How could you be so cruel? <laughs> I enjoyed it, my dear lady.
must have gone over. You're lucky to be alive, young man. Why? What kind of establishment is this, then? A morgue? Block C conference room. His name's Simon Wells, and he's an American. Now, Major, what would I be likely to know about a bloke like that? You tell me. What's he got to do with your lot? What's he got to do with your lot? Be careful. You gave Wells a beating yesterday, and today you were chasing him around here. Why? Major, Major, Major. I hope you remember my rights as one of Her Majesty's loyal subjects. I thought they don't have any. That bothers me, that does. You 
you may speak now, but not too loudly. They don't have eyes here. He means television cameras. They watch us in other places, but they don't know about our hideout. Who are they? Our teachers. Could we talk to your teachers? Oh, no, you can't do that. Why not? They're not here. And if the eyes saw you, the Black Death would come and take you away from us. Haven't you come to save us? To save you from what? I told you you were wrong, Elizabeth. They don't know. Simon, I'm terribly cold. Children, even if we can't talk to your teachers, would you show us the way back? We could put you back where we found you, but there's nowhere to go from there. Please stay with us for a little while. Oh, we're soaking wet. Do you mind being wet? We don't mind being wet. Don't you catch cold? I don't know what you mean. You have blankets and towels. Yes, Richard will get you some blankets from the dormitory. Come on, children. The rest of you have to go to bed now anyway, or they'll be bound to notice. Do Can't we you stay a little longer? No, do as I say. Well, can we touch before we go? You said she was warm. Would you mind? You see, they've never touched warm people before. Oh, it's all right. Henry, where are you going? I'm going to the screen, Victoria, because I missed my turn. You will be missed and you'll be punished. You can have your turn tomorrow. I don't care. You saw those two. And Richard saw a bird once. And I've never seen anything. All right, go on, but don't be long. if I can get dry. Let's stay at least until we find what's going on. These children are locked up. The sea doesn't look dangerous from here. It looks very beautiful. But the cliff is dangerous. You must be careful. Is there no way down? No. Do you think you'll be comfortable? Have you decided to stay? First, we need to ask some more questions. Let's begin at the beginning. What's your name? Victoria. Victoria, my name is Simon. And this is Joan. There, I've saved your life. <laughs> I learned how to do it in gym classes. Tell very much, old chap. Don't you want to come out now and come inside? The others are in there already. Inside where? Inside here. 
Do you want me to help you? <clears throat> Trust the boys with the bloodhounds to think up something like this. Do that again. Are you coming inside? You said the others were in there. They are. Forward into battle, dear chaps. Open it. Open it. I can't do that. Not from inside. Doesn't work from inside. You're not allowed to talk here. Follow me. How old are you, Victoria? I'm 11. We're all 11. And we all have our birthdays in the same week. How long have you been here? We've been here always. What about your parents? Do they come and see you? Oh, we were hoping you were our parents. I see. And do you know why you're cold? There are some things, Simon, that you can't understand. You'll be told everything in time, each new thing as you are able to understand it, and not before. I found another one! Don't tell lies, Henry! I did, I did! I found another one! I saved his life, Victoria. Would you like a blanket, too? No. Don't you mind being wet? No. Is he warm too, Simon? Yes, Victoria. I almost drowned looking for you, Johnny. Before you get yourself excited, King, touch the little boy's face. Tell me, I Go don't want... Go on, touch the little boy's face. Never mind, Henry. Never mind what he said. Victoria, I promise we'll stay until we can find out how to help you. Now go to bed, children. Go to bed now. Oh. I don't sit up nights questioning people about your private affairs now, do I? I mean, your fence is your fence, all right. But we didn't ask the Yank to go jumping over it. Look, you don't want to know about a private quarrel now, do you, Major? Let him go. Ah. Well, uh, much obliged to you, Major. Hi, both. All that that boy needs is a good thrashing. Yes, but I don't think he's lying. No. Come over here, Jamie. Do what I say! She's staying where she is. King, as much as I dislike you, you're still Joan's brother. Yes, that's right. Come over here, Jamie. Suppose we fight over Joan after we get out of here. All right, let's get out of here. You have to wait. I promised the children that we'd stay here, at least for tonight. Well, I didn't promise the zombies anything. And I'm not going to stay here and watch the two of you. What do you think we're going to do? Don't talk dirty, Johnny. It's you, King. It's you who thinks dirty. 
You've tried to lock me up and you've tried everything you can think of to stop me from being a woman. Because you've never had a girl yourself. It's not true, Jenny. Yes, it is. I only want you out of the hands of men like that. Men like what? Any man, any man at all. Would you let me go out with Ted or Sid or any of them? No man, no man at all. That's true, King. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Just don't you put your hands on him, that's all. Or I'll kill you both. And I'm gonna sit here and watch. What do you think I am? Come on. Try yourself. Your head, huh? There were two intruders, you said? No, no, three. Romy and Juliet. And um, and the boy broke my statue. Unhappy, dangerous boy, I think. Have you told the police? No. Should I? There's nothing they can do. That's what I thought. This place seems to have a fatal attraction for lovers. Now, why faith? Hmm? It's just a phrase. Well, you can't blame the place for everything, darling. Times change, people with them. Sometimes it brings you closer together, and sometimes it doesn't. Have I changed so much, other than becoming old and ugly? So what would that matter? Hmm? It's just that you have become a man with a purpose. You have a purpose, too. Yes, but I... Tell mine to anyone who cares to listen. Yours is a secret purpose. I'm a public servant. You didn't have to become one. I felt I had no choice. It's too late to do anything in private life. Too late? Why? I live with one fact. A power has been released that will melt those stones. 
we must be ready when the time comes. <laughs> you really believe it's going to happen, don't you? Certainly, there's absolutely no question. And there's nothing we can do to prevent it? Nothing. Back to work. Back to work. I don't believe that. Excuse me, sir. May I have a word with you? We found nothing, sir. We're looking for three people. <laughs> A public servant is the only servant who has secrets from his master. I'm very sorry to leave you with the last word. Mm. Duty calls? Duty calls. My hair is grey, but not with years nor grew it white in a single night as men's have grown from sudden fears. My limbs are bowed, though not with toil, but rusted with a vile repose. For they have been a dungeon's spoil, and mine has been the fate of those to whom the goodly earth and air are banned and barred, forbidden fair. ourselves in the lab. Were you ever a child, Holland? I'm sure you don't expect me to answer that one, sir. There's always one child missing. And it's been like that for two days. You're going to the hideout? Yes, sir. And I should like permission to investigate it. Have you never had a secret hiding place? You know, in all this time, Holland, You've never had anything more to worry you than one stray rabbit. How many times have I told you that the mental health of the children is more important than your ideas of security? That'll be all, Holland. Thank you very much. I'm afraid I have a more serious problem, sir. Well, do try to confine yourself to the practical side of it and don't try to explain the scientific details to me. You know that I'm against the present arrangement. That's not your province, Talbot. And we must be ready when the time comes. It, it makes observation more difficult, and we still don't know enough about maintaining their immunity. Well? You remember, sir, how we lost the other two. What is it, Talbot? Mary is developing the same symptoms. Mary? Mary, you're going to have an injection. Here comes the spells, Jenny. Jewel doesn't come in spells. It's, it's been locked up, it does it. I'll, I'll be all right. We think that we're being punched for our sins in a dungeon like the prisoner of Chillon. And when the time comes, our parents are going to come and open the magic doors for us. There's no such thing as magic. You aren't taking account of the facts. What are the facts, William? We're on a huge spaceship. We're going to a star. They're teaching us the history of Earth so that we can build a civilization when we get there. It's going to be a long, long trip. By the time we get there, our teachers will be dead. That doesn't take account of the rabbit. The rabbit was on board all the time. Tell me about the rabbit. We found it one day in here, and we used to play with it. But it grew sleepy, and his hair fell 
out. And the Black Death came and took it away. We can't tell you everything now. We've got to get you out of here. Will you show me the doors? There's the cave door, and there's the lift, which the Black Death comes down. And? But there's another door. Will you take me there? No, he can't. The eyes will see him. That doesn't matter. I've worked out all the blind Come on, spots. Wait. We may not have much time. What is it, Simon? Don't worry. Just wait for him. Good morning. I thought you'd better see this place, officer. Here, I'll find I wish you had let me investigate that hideout, sir. Sir. On seven. What's he doing? He's following one of the children. It'll be young William. Very ingenious of young William. But he forgot that Wells is six feet tall. Turn them off. I hate those things. But they are necessary. It is not necessary of you to tell me so. Well, the others may be dead, or they may be with him. If he went over the cliff when the tide was right, he could have reached the cave. Well, then, there must be something wrong with the cave door. Unless he didn't go over the cliff at all. Check the bad house door first. Make sure that Miss Nielsen doesn't see you. Then take a boat out and check the cave entrance. When we find out how he got in, we can worry about getting him out. He's been there too long already. I do not want the children to watch him die. Just an ordinary lock on this side. What is a lock, Simon? Good afternoon, Miss Nielsen. Good afternoon. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh. Though the name's Gregory. You may remember we met at the Gloucester the other day. I remember you? You're one of Bernard's toy soldiers, aren't you? Yes, that's right. I've been promising myself I'd come up and look at your work someday by way of improving my mind. Mm -hmm. Very clever, very clever. It's a very interesting effect, that. Sort of unfinished, really, isn't it? Well, now, isn't everything in life sort of unfinished, hmm? Well, I never really thought of it like that. May I come in? Please, please. Thank you. I hope you don't mind the silly questions. Hmm. As long as you don't mind my silly answers. Shouldn't I? <laughs> if I could explain these, I wouldn't have to make them. Yes. Quite. Thank you, Miss Nielsen. You've been very kind. Nothing, nothing at all. Come again, come again. Thank you. All clear, Captain. I'm Sid. Yes, I've noticed you hanging around. Perhaps you notice other things, too. Where's King? Hope you have a better sense of humor than he does. Yeah, I'm laughing all the time. We haven't seen him since he came up here. Would you like me to find him for you? Yeah, maybe you know where he is. Maybe you know why the brass is knocking about in your quarry. Hmm? Quiet, please. Order, please. 
Phil, Mary's not here. Don't worry about that, Victoria. Mary's to stay in bed. Now, children, I've called you together at this unusual time because it's very important that I want you to cooperate with me. I know that you have some big people in your hideout. Oh, yes, I know about your hideout. And I wanted you to keep it. But I will not be able to let you keep it unless you help me. Is that understood? If you do not help me, I will be forced to take your hideout away from you. Now, Victoria, how many of these big people are you hiding? Don't be stubborn, children. It's very important. Big people are dangerous to you. How did they get inside? Very well. I can find out all that later. Now, Victoria, I want you to go to them and tell them to come out. Tell them to come to the lift and we will get them out. We want to keep them here, sir. You cannot. I'm very sorry to tell you this. But here is dangerous for them. They will become ill. They will go sleepy if they stay with you. They are warm. And nothing that's warm can live with you. You will remember what happened to the rabbit. You're just trying to frighten us, sir. We don't believe you. You killed the rabbit because we loved it. You sent the black death for it because we loved it. I love you, children, and I'm trying to protect you. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. Think, children, think, think. You will have to do as I say. We're going to take you with us. Will you climb out and open the cave door for us? What's the good of that? I've been to the other door. It's no good without a key. You think you can climb these cliffs? We'll have to swim for it. <laughs> yeah. Through those rocks with a tide like that with the kids. Let them come for us. Don't go, King. You're dead. We've seen too much. Are you coming or not? I know it's kid stuff knocking about in a gang. But what else is there to do? What would you like to do? Hmm? I don't know. Something you want to do, no? had to send someone down because of your disobedience. I want you to keep quite still. Stay out of the way. Children, that sort of destructiveness will accomplish absolutely nothing. This is a crisis. Do not understand what is happening. Now try to be quiet. Think, think. You will have to do as I say eventually.
You'd better come out, Holland. We can't direct you. Take them off. We can't undress in front of each other. You do as I say. All right, children, undress. are radioactive. The children? What in heaven's name are you doing? You can't be expected to understand. I'm taking them out of here. You can't do that. They're dangerous. Please, Simon, take us out. Please take us out. Please, please, please. Come. Do it, Wells. Come. Can't I? Come on, children. Can we put our clothes on? Yes. It doesn't matter now. Do you understand what you're doing? Do you understand what you're doing? Yes, certainly. Time to the bed. Time to the bed. We can't wait. I want to go too, Joan. We can't leave her, Simon. She's sick. Be careful. The children were opening the locks with the radiation of their own bodies. Now, I've been here, and we needn't worry about the cave door because I've checked it. Then take a complete detachment to this door. Alert the helicopters in case they get any farther. And, Gregory, if Miss Nielsen's at the studio, make sure she doesn't see anything. And hurry. Yes, sir.
Hello? Anybody there? He's gone, in the car. I've seen you before. You're the man who knows all about violence, aren't you? You're the man who knows all the answers, aren't you? Why are you doing this? What's it all for? What are you trying to make out of these children? What do you want with us? Answer me. Will you answer me? Where is Major Holland? He's down there. Is he alive? He's alive. Gregory, get him out of there, quickly as possible. Yes, sir. Mr. Wells, you and the young lady may go to your boat. Children, Bernard. The worst of this incident is that my children will now think of themselves as prisoners and as freaks. Did you do this thing to them, Bernard? They were born as they are. Their mothers were exposed to a, an unknown kind and level of radiation by an accident. I don't need to tell you that there are such accidents. 300 in the past 15 years. That is a fact. We don't yet know how to repeat the exact conditions that produced these children. You mean you would if you could? Certainly. Uh. Freya. Freya. It is now desperately important that you should try to understand me and what I am doing. Life has the power to change. After the first great explosion, strange, wonderful flowers, unknown before, bloomed in the desert. To survive the destruction that is inevitably coming, we need a new kind of man. An accident gave us these nine precious children the only human beings who have a chance to live in the conditions which must inevitably exist 
when the time comes. Every civilized nation is searching, searching for the key to survival that we have found. I don't want to hear any more. I didn't want you to know. You will remember my warning when you arrived. But you let the American and the girl go. They are dying already. They will never make contact with another human being. And when they die, the boat will be destroyed. Freya, you too know my secrets. Now, my children are the buried seeds of life. When that time comes, the thing itself will open up the door and my children will go out to inherit the earth. What earth, Bernard? What earth will you leave then? After all that man has made and still has to make, is this the extent of your dream? To set nine ice-cold children free in the ashes of the universe? I have no choice. I have no choice at all. You refuse to join me. You know what your refusal means. Yes. It means that you are wasting whatever time I have left. Don't you know you're poison? You're killing me. Start again, John. We can go back again to the beginning. We can't, Simon. We can't leave the children. 